Joseph from RoboFlow, have you ever built a computer vision model and you've wondered, how do I use this thing? How do I show my friends? How do I actually get some model inferences? Well, today I'm gonna show you how you can build your very own web application to get inferences from your model in your browser. Let me show you a little example here. So I already have my example web app here that I can give it a given uh, file and then it'll do inference. This model here that I've made does chess piece detection. So I'm gonna browse here and I'm gonna grab one of these images, this chessboard. So I'll grab that one. Um, then I'm gonna scroll down here and I'll click run inference. It thinks and it does inferring and then boom, I get the output. Those boxes are pretty faint. So let me turn the labels on and make them five pixels and I'll run inference again. There, boom, you can see them a bit better. So you see all these individual labels appearing on my given image. How can you do the same? Great question. So first and foremost, I trained my model using RoboFlow train and then RoboFlow inference allows me to use that model in production. So today I'm gonna to walk you through how you can create your very own web app just like this, how you can customize this web app and how you can continue to use it to show your friends or your colleagues how to make inference. First and foremost, back in RoboFlow here, I have a given chess data set. Um, and in my chess data set here, I have given versions of my, um, uh, given versions of this data set. So if I had, for example, um, this version here, I could go over here and click use RoboFlow train, which is gonna kick off a RoboFlow train job. Now let me get myself out of the way. So I have one credit on my account, and I'll go ahead and start training. Now, while that trains, I actually already have one of these that's finished training. So this says, hey, I'm training. I'll tell you when, let you know when I'm done. And the way that we know that it's training, by the way, is if I were to refresh this page with this specific version, I will see here, now it says, eh, it's training. We'll send you an email when it's done. Well, let me just fast forward a little bit and jump on over to an example here where I have already run RoboFlow train on a given version, okay? So this model here, I've or this version of the data set, Chess V10, I've run RoboFlow train, and so I get my detailed results. Uh, and I can see those detailed results, the test set, the training graphs, and we'll do a different video on what that's all about. But here's the key, use your train model. Now you can use the curl command or the direct URL if you wanna make API calls, and I'll put a link in the docs. But today we're gonna to dive, in, dive into the example web app. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that example web app. And that takes me here to a code pen. And okay, what is this? So there's code on one side and there's the app on the other side. This is because this is a live environment that you can change and edit. So I can actually go into the HTML and I can change any sort of stuff that I wanna change. We'll do that in a minute. First things first, let me just minimize the HTML and walk through what we have here, okay? So inside this example web application, we have the model name, which is named for us. We have the access token, which you should not share with anyone. You have the upload method, whether it's gonna be uploaded via uh, browsing your local file system or using an upload to a given URL. We have the ability to filter individual classes, which I'll show you more about how that's gonna be useful here in a second. We have a minimum confidence, meaning how confident do we want our model to be before it makes a prediction of a given box. We can dial that down and our model will make more box predictions, um, or we can dial it up and our, box will, or our model will make fewer box predictions. So if our model is really struggling to find our boxes, turn that down. And then we can also have a max overlap of how many bounding boxes should overlap, uh, what percent of area should overlap before our model says, you know what, I don't think there's another object here. So I'm gonna leave that at 50%. If 50% of one bounding box overlaps with, 50, with the area of another one, and the area of the two is 50%, then only one of the boxes will be drawn. Okay, inference result. Now I can show an image, or I can get the JSON results back. Now I'm gonna do image, which actually shows me the resulting image. And then I can turn labels on or off in my stroke width to be one pixel, two pixel, five pixel, or 10 pixel. So I'll turn it to five pixel and I'll turn my labels on and I'll just do the same thing that I did just a moment ago to kick off this video. So I'm gonna grab this same image and I'll run inference. And so here RoboFlow tells me that it is inferring and then it spits out the result. Okay, so I can actually see here that this does a pretty good job, but there's some things here where I don't think there's a white pond back there, right? So the model's not 
perfect, but it's doing a pretty good job. Now, this is where it's useful, for example, to filter our classes. That class name is called White Pond. And so if I want to only see where white ponds are being predicted, just so I can zoom in and see, maybe it's making some false white pond predictions. I'll go back up here and I'll say, you know what, white pond. That's, I have to type the exact correct name of the class. And then let's run that inference again so I can only see the white pond results. And here, you know, it's much clearer that my model could be better. It's finding this pond, this pond, it missed this one, has this one, missed this one, has this one, missed this one, has this one, uh, and then it thought there was a white pond back here. Let's see, for example, if we turn down the confidence, let's see how this does. Maybe it'll say more of those white ponds. So let's turn the confidence down to say, I don't know, 25. And we'll run inference again. Eh, you know, it still didn't pick up those other ponds. Maybe the boxes overlap too much. Let's turn the box overlap width down to just 10% and run inference again. Ah, that didn't help exactly right either. So maybe our model just simply needs to be made better. But certainly something I do see is that this is an error over here, where this is certainly not a white pond. And so I need to probably have more training data for my model to learn from. Now, something else that I could see that's useful is I could also get the JSON results to get the exact bounding box positions of these white ponds. And here I can actually see the confidence levels because it's directly embedded in the JSON that RoboFlow responds with. So I can see the confidence for each of these ponds is actually quite high. Even that false positive pond that's in the back Although I'm gonna guess that this one is that false positive pond. Uh, so maybe if we turn the confidence like really, um, turn the confidence, oh wait, this one isn't predicted because it's uh, 0.034. So if I were to turn the confidence very low, we'd have another false positive prediction. Uh, it looks like if I turn it to 0.88, uh, point, yeah, let's try, let's try 0.89. Okay, let's try 0.89 for, for the confidence. Minimum confidence, 0.89. And run, and run inference. Get the image back. <laughs> okay, so I didn't get rid of that box. But you can see how this is extremely useful to get quick results and debug model performance. Now that's just one of the things that we can do. We can also customize this given pane. So because this is a code pad, we can actually go in here and change each of the individual parameters that we might want to change. So for example, let's go to the upload method portion. I could say upload method, and then I could modify this to say, uh, where is the image coming from? Just like that, say upload method, where is the image coming from? And look, the code pen updates automatically. Um, and then maybe actually I don't want to allow a user to have other ways to upload. Maybe I don't want that at all. So I could say, just comment out, these two buttons in the HTML. And there, look, upload method. And now I'm gonna say, please select a, an image from your local computer. Okay, so now I don't even have the ability to do URL. Upload method, please select an image from your local computer. And I could browse and change that. By the way, you could copy and paste all of this HTML, all of this CSS, and all of this JavaScript and put it directly into your own hosted environment so that you could run inference your own way. This is just calling the RoboFlow API, which is gonna to continue to be hosted. Now, whether or not you want to have it hosted here or elsewhere makes it super easy. But the point here is to give you an interactive environment to change and use your model and show and create different predictions. So maybe we can just do this with a few more images just to see uh, some other res results. Maybe this one that has a bit fewer pieces on the board. I'll make my stroke width five and I'll turn the labels off for this one just, just so you can see. Oops, please enter a valid. <laughs> Let me refresh my app altogether so that it does expect everything as so we get a hard refresh. And yeah, let me grab that same image. So that one that has fewer things going on and I want the image and I'll do five pixels and I'll do my labels off. Okay, there we go. See, this one does actually a much better job. Uh, there's no duplicative bounding boxes and let's turn the labels on and run inference and see. Okay, let's zoom in. Black pawn, black pawn, black king, white rook, white knight, black pawn, white pawn, white pawn, white king, black pawn, stellar. This one does exactly right. It gets all the pieces correct. 
Um, I can make those boxes a little bit bigger, or a little bit thicker, I should say. Yeah, that makes them really easy to, to see. So there you have it. I can actually use this web example web app to easily debug my model performance, change different example parameters, and improve and share my model with others, whether they're a non-technical colleague or not. I could share my URL directly with a colleague and say, hey, try out this model. And if you sent them the URL, they would have the same exact thing that you've trained. And so just like that, you have your very own example web app to use your RoboFlow trained model. As always, we can't wait to see what you build. Like and subscribe to the RoboFlow YouTube for tips, updates, and other things that we have that are surprises so that you can get early access to features like this. Happy training.